Hello everyone and welcome to this new tutorial. Today we are going to go one step further into the Star Wars game tutorial. We are going to see how to spawn and how to destroy the enemies. To start, there is we need to instantiate all the enemies. Okay, because we cannot spawn enemies in the runtime, we need to create them and then use them as we go inside the game. I am going to create right now canvas that we call objects that will contain uh, canvas is actually here objects that will be uh, containing all our enemies so inside the canvas I'm gonna add a plane that will be called enemy zero and so I will use the same uh, technique as we have used already for the bullets meaning that we have 20 bullets so we can shoot each bullet one at a time and then it looks like that we have an infinite number of bullets but actually we only have 20 and when the last one is sent we go back to send the first bullet I'm gonna add as I did for um, the bullets 20 uh, enemies so let's create the 20 enemies okay 19 great just selecting by hitting click and shift click here selecting all the enemies and scaling, scaling them down doesn't matter actually just so you can see uh, my face here so now we have 20 planes that represents our enemies what we want to do also is add a texture on each plane and I want to do the same thing as we did for the ship meaning that the ship can also explode so we want little animation okay if we want this animation to be on each plane we need to create a material for each of our plane and also we need to create an animation sequence for each of our material because if I only create one material and one animation sequence uh, if I destroy one ship it will run the animation on every other plane so if there is like uh, two or three enemies at the same time as the screen and just only one is, is exploding uh, we will show the animation on every of the plane so we don't want that so we have to create one material and one uh, animation sequence for each of our objects so let's do it let's create 20 materials so I will call uh, the material the enemy mat 0 and then copy and paste 19 times here uh, yeah, seven, okay so we have our 19 uh, materials and also uh, I'm gonna add uh, 20 animation sequences so here I will call them enemy enemy sequence yeah and and then start from zero yeah did, did I start from zero here? yeah okay and then copy paste 19 times yeah okay so now I need to add actually the texture here our textures with the enemy the enemy is a stormtrooper head uh, select like click and shift click to select everything and then select enemy so we have the same texture but actually the animation the enemy sequence or the animation sequence sorry is different so when we kill one enemy it will play an animation on this enemy and not on every enemy okay but the thing is also here a nice example of using scripting because I don't have to set all the materials by hand in, in each object here okay which will be uh, take me like 10 minutes to do so it's better to do it by scripting so now let's start the script scripting part okay so we have here our little um, text document to explain what we are going to do today so we are going to use animation module reactive module time module textures module materials module animation sequences and random module okay that's a lot but actually we're just gonna use a bit of each of these modules so the goal like I said is to create multiple enemies that can spawn and explode so we are going now to create the enemy class inside a JS file we have already done this part actually okay anyway let's create this part here yeah so let's call it enemy.js and let's double click to open it make it a little bit bigger yeah so here yeah. so 
let's delete everything that I don't need. I don't need send here. I don't need either here. Also, I'm renaming diagnostic to D and then removing all of this. Okay, so um, let's start. So we create a class that we are going to export to add inside our script, main script file. So we need to export the class. The class is called enemy. So we have to use a constructor to initiate the class. So the class will be able to spawn here. here. Also, uh, I want the class to explode. And I want also my enemy uh, to lose life. So it will be hit by the bullets from the ship. So here is everything I need, but now I can just command this, okay. So inside my constructor, like the previous classes, I need a plane that represents my object, okay. And also here, I will need the diffuse material of the um, of our material. So I will be able here to uh, manage my sequences, etc. Okay, to the curve, the frame of the sequence. Because if we go in in my in a sequence animation sequence here, when you click on it. You can see uh, it's also looping if you want it to be looping, but also there is a number of F the frame, so you can accelerate and lower the speed here using the frame rate. Um, but here also it's what we are going to use the current frame, because if we want to play the animation, we will need to say that if the animation is, is playing, we're gonna go from one frame to another frame, okay? And we will manage this uh, using the scripting. I'm just I'm gonna disable looping for every of the sequence here. here. Okay, um, let's go inside our script. Uh, not this one, this one here. Okay, so like I said, um, we need the plane here. We need diffuse. Actually, uh, you can set the diffuse inside the plane and then use everything from the plane, but I prefer do it this way so for my readability um, so like we are going to do the same thing as we did for the loader and the bullets we are going to shoot one bullet at a time and here we are going to spawn one enemy at a time with um, inside the 20 enemies and then when we have finished the 20 we go back to the first one okay so when an enemy is, uh, is spawning during all his lifetime of the, his animation um, it is not available to be uh, to be spawned again. So I'm using a, a, a boolean boolean that I'm calling available here. That is uh, true at the beginning. Okay. There is also life because our enemy can have maybe multiple life. In our game, they will be uh, they will have only one life, meaning that if they are hit by something, they just explode. Okay, but maybe if you want to add to use this class to create a boss or just a, a bigger enemy or stronger enemy, you need this enemy to have multiple life, not just one. Okay, so anyway, in this example, they will all, only have one one life. Um, also, I'm just doing this uh, here. Just change the order. Okay, um, so the plane also, we start, we hide the plane because we actually don't need to see the plane from the beginning. So we use the hidden properties and we set it to true. Okay, we hide this. Also spawning an enemy is like spawning a bullet. Uh, it's just to create an animation that we move the enemy and the enemy are coming from the top and they are going from the top to the bottom. Okay, and they are crossing all the screen. So we need a time driver to manage our animations. And then we need also a time driver configuration. And I'm just gonna copy paste this because I don't know it, I don't know this by heart. So anyway, here. So inside the configuration, there is a duration in, in milliseconds, meaning that the time that will uh, that the animation will last, the count. And, um, and mirroring. Okay, this animation doesn't need, doesn't need to be mirrored, and we need just this animation to run one time. Okay, and for the duration, we can create a global variable that we are going to call uh, enemy speed, 
to manage the enemy speed without having to literally modify the code um, or just go down to the code to modify it we just modify from here so animation speed I think like we can do 3000 uh, which means three seconds um, okay so that's everything we need I think for the constructor now let's uh, use the spawn method let's create a spawn method so um, actually what we can do with the life um, is spawning an enemy and change the life when we spawn the enemy. For for example, if you want to um, augment the, the, the maybe the um, the how do I say the level, and then we want your enemies come from to go from one uh, life and then level fifty to go from two hits to destroy. So you need to add them to, to you need to add two life to them. So you can we can uh, pass life as a parameter here. Okay, and also there is something that we will gonna need. We need the range. We need the range of the screen from um, this position here to this position here. Okay, so we need the actual size and the position. So we will be spawning uh, the enemy within these two position uh, from the left to right in a um, in a random order. So we we go we're gonna use random method to choose a position from uh, this position to th that position. Okay. So actually x range is will be containing the position here and the position here so actually at the middle here we are at zero we are the, at the position zero so here it's minus something and here it's plus something so here we are at zero okay i will show you how i, how I get this range after um, so we need to start the animation so um something that i do already always is like i'm, I'm going to uh choose uh, to, to go to Spark AR documentation uh, and take the animation module and copy paste because I don't know it by heart so here I always say that but that's true um, here yeah so we have everything we need here for our animation okay so let's copy this here um, remove this I don't need this uh, here this is there here, this here, okay, it's not okay. So um, let's start from the first line. So our time driver, uh, we added it inside the class, so we can access from here. Uh, we need to import animation, okay? So uh, here, let's import animation here. So yeah, okay, on the top here. We don't need the export here. Okay. Um, so it's animation, time driver, time driver parameters. So we have the time driver here, configuration that is here. We can just copy paste this and use it here. Okay. So we have our time driver. Uh, also, we need to start um, by setting the life. And also, we need to uh, make this not available actually because it's going to spawn so it's not available and then also we need to show the plane because he's going to do his animation so we need to see it uh, so let's set it to visible okay so now um, I have my uh, quadratic sample here but I don't need a quadratic sample actually, I just need a line error sample. Okay, so animation sample here, line error. Okay, and it goes from 0 to 1. This will move our um, y axis of the plane. Okay, so uh, because that's the only direction that our uh, um, enemy will take is, uh, is going from top to bottom, okay? The x-axis will just use to make it spawn to a different position and then it go straight down. So here, um, this line, translation animation, we don't, okay, translation linear sample, translation animation here. So time driver and here it's linear sample. Okay, um, we will not pass it to the x position but y position. Um, and we have stored our plane okay same here we have stored our time driver okay um, so 
what are we going to do for our uh, x position? So we need to find uh, a random position. Transform here, yeah. So we need to find a random position from uh, this position here, top of the screen, top left of my screen, to top right of my screen, and then it to spawn within one of these positions, and each time a different position. So I'm gonna use random. <coughs> Because if I do random, random here, and then just do this, it will return me a random value from 0 to 1. Okay, so now I have a random value from 0 to 1. But how do I, um, how do I choose from 0 to 1 a position from my uh, x range, which is, uh, x range is, is, is a, looks like this, okay? x range is something that looks like this with the x1 position and x2 position from the x start and x end. So x start is top left and x end is top right. Okay, so it looks like this. Um, so how do I choose from 0 to 1 random position and how do I select this? So we need to do two range. Okay, we need to use the reactive function called two range. So two range. Um, the so reactive function will take a value here, which will be returned by our uh, random. So random maybe will return uh, 0 0.2 from uh, within these two values. Okay. So we need to use uh, our random value here. Random uh, random value that is returned here. So yeah, random value, and then ask uh, to range to give us a value uh, within corresponding from um, our random value, which is from zero to one, something from zero to one, and then uh, give us a value within the range that we we are going to give him. Okay, so something from zero to one within this range, so x range of zero and x range. Of one, so maybe zero will be minus one minus hundred, and then two is hundred. So it will it will cast it transform this zero point two within the value from um, inside this. Okay, so zero will be this, and one it will be this, and zero point two will be in between the two. Okay, so that's why we use two range, and then. That's our spawn x value. Okay. That will give that we will be placing here, placing here. Okay. Sorry, I can remove this. Okay. So um, let's do this and then let's do also this. So we have our random value which is from 0 to 1, and then we give it a range from minus 100 or to 100 or something like that, and then it will give him give us uh, the range value, okay, that corresponds to the random value. So now we can we are spawning and then <coughs> giving giving a translation to the, to our transform. So uh, the, the ship will go from the top to the bottom. We need also to watch when the the, the time driver is finished because when the time driver is finished, we need to release uh, actually this object and set it to available. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, so it's the method uncompleted. Yeah, that we need to uh, subscribe. So we don't need to wait anything to get back anything. And here and then when it's on complete, this dot um, available is equal to true. Okay, and so uh, we also need to set it visible to false, but we are going to set it false here at the end of the explosion. And here uh, we need to actually use our time driver and then also the translation animation here because it follows the linear sampler will go from zero to one. So we need to range also. Uh, this value here 
like we um, like we did here. So we can actually just maybe copy paste this and then uh, call it our uh, ranged y, okay, position, which actually will then be replacing here. And this we can imagine, and then taking uh, the translation animation, okay, and we'll go from um, 1000 to minus 1000. Okay. And also uh, we need to set the current frame to zero. To reset the current frame to zero. So the current frame is in diffuse dot current frame equal to zero. Because we need to have like the first frame we want when the um, which is the frame zero corresponding to the head of the stormtrooper that is the enemy. And also here the plane is not uh, visible, the plane is hidden. I always make this mistake. So hidden force here. Yeah. So it will be visible. Okay, great. Make this method here hit. Um, so hit is pretty simple, straightforward. When you take a hit, it loses one point of life. So this dot life minus minus because we are just using it for this in this example. So for the explode method, what we need actually is to uh, reset because it is destroyed. So uh, it's now av available. So it's, av it's available. And then we need to create our frame that we are going to use. Actually, the frame here starts at one because the frame zero was the normal, uh, put the normal frame of the, of the object when it is not destroyed. And then we start destroying, it goes from one, two, three, and then this. We need to, if we change the, the frame here, we need to set it to our diffuse. So this, that <coughs> actually we just copy paste here. Set to our frame. And now what we need to do is create our own uh, sequence, uh, change our sequence of uh, frames. So go from one frame to another within a certain amount of time and then stop it. How do we do this? We are going to use the time module, okay? Um, so let's go um, and have a look to the time module here. So time module, you integrate it like that. So then use time here. Oh, and then I see that I haven't uh, had either reactive module here. Yeah, I haven't had reactive module. So here it's here. Cool, then copy and paste. I took reactive, so great. Um, then let's have a look to our method. Um, we are going to use a set interval method. So um, we turn a subscription object so we can subscribe to it. The function specified by a callback is called back at is called an interval specified by delay. So this function is called at each, at each delay. Okay, so let's use this one. So time dot set interval our, our callback function and then the delay. I think here 200 seconds is great to go from one frame to another. Okay, uh, so this one is like I said go one frame to another so increasing the frame then set the frame Okay, also let's read a bit more. This set interval will continue calling the callback until time module clear interval is called. The callback is a function that has one argument, the elapsed time since the timer has started. An exception is thrown when the delay is zero or less. Okay, so um, we're gonna use time module clear interval to uh, clear uh, and stop set interval function because else it will run all the time. So uh, let's use this one. Um, time here. So clear, uh, clear interval here. We're gonna clear set and uh, we're gonna clear set interval. Actually, we need to store uh, the return value to clear it. Uh, let's so we'll call uh, elapsed uh, of 
Uh, I don't know how to call it, so let's see how did they call it in the example. Uh, they call it interval timer, okay. And then we can see how they use a clear interval like this, okay. Interval timer, so let's call the same here. Let's call it interval timer, okay. Clear interval need to be called, but not just after we called time set interval, else it, it won't run the, and it won't wait the 200 milliseconds. So we need to wait until at least it runs three times uh, or two times actually. So, um, because it will go every 200 seconds increasing the, the number of frame. So we have a certain amount of frame and then if I wait not too long, I will only go half of my frame and then if I wait too long, I will go uh, in other frames that doesn't exist. So that's a bad idea. To wait for clear interval, we're gonna use a method uh, of time that is called set timeout here. We can even copy paste here. Set timeout, we are going to wait for uh, increase this loop two times, so 400 milliseconds. And then we are using this method inside the callback function of set timeout yeah so here create a function and then we call clear interval here okay if the enemy take a bullet it explodes or if he lose all his life it explodes and then if it explodes we need to stop the animation so we use our time driver and we stop it okay also uh, we need at the end of the explosion to reset the position to we push it at the end of the animation which is minus 1000 and then we also uh, hide it again okay um, so, so we got, gonna use set timeout again to wait for uh, the time the, of to give uh, some time to the explosion to finish we can use like 1000 one second um, so this dot plane that iron equal equal uh, to true. We can also transform the position plane actually to minus one thousand. Okay, here. Okay, let's see if it's okay. Uh, animation time reactive constructor here. Okay, then we explode, we hit, we spawn, uh, life falls uh, here, okay. And then here we use uh, random here. Oh, but I think I did not uh, integrate random here. So here, and then I think it's fine. Okay, um, okay, great. So uh, now we need to integrate uh, this class into our uh, main script and then also uh, get the texture and the materials and set everything together. Let's first integrate the textures and the materials. So here you remember inside uh, our um, main uh, function here, um, we have this little uh, weird thing just to do a test. Okay, to test our, so this is triggered when I tap and then it, it does this kind of small loop and then destroy the ship just to try the explosion in the spawn of the ship. We are going to use the same method to try the spawn and the explosion of the enemies. Okay, so uh, let's make it a little bit clearer. So here we are going to integrate textures and also our materials. Okay, okay, so um, how to integrate textures and material? First, we need to uh, integrate the module. So materials require uh, materials. Okay. Okay. Uh, we also integrate textures. Okay. Require textures. Okay. Great. Um, so, textures, and we are going to use find by pattern. Okay, how to find by pattern? What is the pattern of the uh, of the of our um, textures name? 
uh, we call them enemy sequence okay so just doing this enemy sequence and then stars which mean everything after enemy sequence so we will take so this will take in account 0 1 etc 219 okay same thing here I need to add a comma here yeah same thing here uh, materials find by pattern actually it's find by pattern or find using pattern uh, let me check I don't remember yeah I have an example um, that is find using pattern yeah um, find using pattern find using pattern here also okay great um, so here is our materials which we have called uh, we have we have named it uh, I think it's enemy mat something yeah enemy mat something so enemy mat and something at the end so we take every materials called and starting with enemy mat now I have this I have this okay I also need to find the scene object which are my uh, my objects that we have called enemy so we use the same pattern here enemy here here okay uh, let me verify objects enemy okay so um, if I have add an enemy here I have uh, here the position in the array of results here have been changed so our two pearls are now uh, 0 1 2 3 so position 4 for screen tap and five for blink so this is screen tap four and then blinked is now five okay uh, let's get our enemies all our enemies so uh, enemy object so enemies objects are result of uh, zero one two three result of three so and then for each of our enemies object we are going to uh, set the diffuse here here and then here so it's our enemy. Yes. We are also going to use the same system as we have used for bullets. So we have pushed all our bullets inside our loader and we are going to push all our enemies inside our enemies array. Okay. So it will look like something like this new enemy and then here. Uh, and we, like we said here in our constructor, we will need the plane and the diffuse. Okay. So the plane and the uh, diffuse which we don't have now okay um, yeah so let's create first uh, the same system that we have created for um, the bullet so an array enemies and then we will need also the next enemy okay so what we are, what we need to do, we need to go also uh, through every of our materials to set the texture, and to we need to go on every of our texture uh, to set the current position of the frame. What we need to do now is we need to first set uh, the texture to the material, and then set the material to the object, and then also change the set the size of the plane. Okay. Um, so uh, we will need um, to create. An enemy size here which will be equal to 500 um, so here our enemy we can transform the scale uh, and here okay which will be equal to enemy size here enemy size okay uh, and then we need to um, set the um, texture to the diffuse and then the diffuse to the material. So first we need to get the texture. So our texture is this result here. So this is 4, 5 and so this is result 6 and result 7. So our texture is result 6. So result of 6. And then as we know that uh, result 3 here is our object and that we have 20 objects we can use the index here so the first the object zero here the first uh, sorry yeah the object zero which is our enemy zero can use 
the texture zero we, because we have 19 texture and same for um, for the material here we can use the material zero the texture zero also for the, the enemy zero okay so um, this is our uh, texture zero texture yeah, zero so we can set to the diffuse material here material we can set this texture this material here okay and so <clears throat> I said here this was a diffuse but actually and actually this is the sequence because we need to change the sequence um, the the current frame of the sequence okay so I will I will modify this in the code just just a bit after um, so here what we do we change the size we set a size to the enemy we need also to hide all our enemy uh, no we are doing it in the constructor anyway we don't need to do this here um, and then here we set to the uh, material is diffused the sub, uh, second texture um, and then the material of the enemy the, our object actually our plane we set the material um, of uh, an enemy that we have been created before so yeah that's pretty much it to in it initialize each of our of our enemies okay okay so let's change the name here because diffuse is actually not the the name we need to use so let's use sequence maybe it's better so yeah i, re I have renamed every uh, sequence here yeah every name from diffuse to sequence because it was not the right way to spell it to uh, call it anyway um so let's go back here we have created our 20 planes so now we need to try and see if we can spawn the planes okay so let's import uh, our classes uh, if we can uh, sorry if we can um, sorry if we can spawn the enemies okay so enemy here from uh, enemy.js okay yeah from okay so what I want to do is as I try uh, to spawn the ship and then to destroy the ship etc to see if my methods are functioning I want to do the same for uh, my enemies so um, enemies we are going to take enemies.0 the first of the array of the of the 20 enemy and we're gonna spawn it okay I'm gonna spawn uh, multiple enemies just to try with the same interval of time so it's now it's enemy 1 and then enemy two, <clears throat> and then enemy three. Okay, for example, and then we can even spawn another one. Four. Okay. So, what we need spawn? What spawn is taking parameter? Oh, yeah. Here, let me select all my spawn. Yeah, let me select. Cool. Doesn't work here. Yeah, let me select this. Okay. Spawn is taking parameter the life of the enemy, so enemy has one life. So okay, and then it's taking also the x range. Let me create it. Yeah. Okay, here x range is an array. Okay, so what I need to do is divide by two here, and and divide by two. So what I have is the last position here and the first position here. But this, I know uh, the center is zero, so this side is negative. So I just multiply by minus one. And so here I have the start position and end, po and, uh, and end position here. When I move, I go from positive and then negative that way, okay. So I can pass X range here all the time okay so now let's try and see okay so here I forgot here comma okay property plane does not exist sure I may, may not have sent the plane here yeah for sure plane does not exist because it's the enemy so here enemies are spawning 
great. They go a little bit maybe too fast, okay. Um, so let's change the speed here, 5000. Okay, and then also I have seen that they are all in standard mode, but the materials, we prefer it in flat mode. Yeah, so they don't need to have a link with the um, lights, okay. So let's save. Tap on the screen. Yeah, so there are enemies are actually spawning. Great. Um, now I want to see if the explosion work. Okay. So uh, actually, there is no link yet to um, hit method because I'm not using it, and I'm not uh, I'm not gonna use it here. We will use it inside the game manager, which is in the next tutorial. Um, so let's let's I mean let's destroy uh, maybe the enemy one here in here so let's get the enemy one here and then we explode it okay let's try to see if this works maybe I just want to do something first if it stop lagging yes please can you can you yeah cool I'm clearing this okay and then let's see <coughs> tap lens animation so one okay see it has destroyed. Um, transform, wrong type. There is an error. So line 41 in explode here. Yes, let me have a yeah, enemy address. Okay, line 41. Yeah, so here I forgot this. My bad. Okay, let's start again. And one is exploding. Okay, and disappearing. So that's what we wanted. Let's start again. So when I tap, and also the, um, and then destroy the, sh the, the, the stand trooper. Okay. Okay, that's it for today. Um, just want maybe to clear a little bit the code because there is some uh, display from the last tutorial. Yeah, and I don't. So it will be cleaner for the next one. Um, in the next tutorial, we're going to see uh, the game manager. And then after the game manager, we are going to see uh, how to manage the collision. So the game manager actually will spawn the enemies and will start the game. And we will also manage a game over part. Okay. So uh, stay tuned and see you later, guys. And have a nice day. Bye-bye.